Okay, in this example, we're going to find the cube roots of i. So we're going to find the three distinct roots of i. I'm going to write i as a complex number. We can write that as 0 plus 1i. If you were to think about graphing that complex number, it's just going to be sitting one unit up on the imaginary axis. So our r value in this case will be 1, and we can use the theta value of pi over 2. So in trigonometric form, we have 1 multiplied by cosine of pi over 2 plus i times sine of pi over 2. And now we've got it in trigonometric form. We've got our number in trigonometric form. We're going to find the three distinct, distinct roots of the number i. We're just going to use the formula here at the bottom. k will equal 0, 1, and 2. So we'll just have to run, run through the different cases and simplify. So when k equals 0, we'll have the cube root of 1. And then we'll multiply that by cosine of theta, which is pi over 2, plus 2 pi times k, which again is 0. That's all over n, which is equal to 3 plus i times sine of theta, which is pi over 2, plus 2 pi times 0, again, all over 3. Well, that's going to leave us with the cube root of 1, which is just 1. 2 pi times 0, we can just forget about those terms. That'll leave us with pi over 2 divided by 3, which is pi over 6. Cosine of pi over 6 is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. Sine of pi over 6 will be 1 half. So we can write our solution as the square root of 3 plus i divided by 2. And that'll be one of our solutions. Next, we can do k equals 1. So again, we've got the cube root of 1. We'll have cosine of the angle pi over 2. Now we've got 2 pi multiplied by 1, all divided by 3 plus i times sine of pi over 2, plus 2 pi multiplied by 1, all over 3. Well, let's see, 2 pi, we can write that as 4 pi over 2. So 4 pi over 2 plus pi over 2, that'll be 5 pi over 2. Divided by 3, that'll give us 5 pi over 6. So we've got cosine of 5 pi over 6, and we've got sine of 5 pi over 6. So we can evaluate those. The cube root of 1 is just 1. Cosine of 5 pi over 6, that's going to equal negative 1 half. And again, sine of 5 pi over 6, that's still going to be root 3 over 2. So we'll be left with negative 1 plus the square root of 3 times i over 2. And lastly, if we do k equals 2, we'll have the cube root of 1 multiplied by cosine of pi over 2 plus 2 pi times 2 all over 3 plus i times sine of the same thing, pi over 2 plus 2 pi multiplied by 2 all over 3. Well, that'll be 4 pi plus pi over 2. So 4 pi, we can write that as, we can write 4 pi as 8 pi over 2. That's going to give us 9 pi over 2. And if we take 9 pi over 2 and divide by 3, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1 third. And that's going to reduce to 3 pi over 2. So the pi over 2 plus 2 pi times 2 over 3, all of that reduces to 3 pi over 2. Well, the cube root of 1, again, is just 1. Cosine of 3 pi over 2, that's going to equal 0. Sine of 3 pi over 2, that's going to equal negative 1. So in this case, we'll just be left with negative i. And now we found uh, the, the three distinct roots of the number i.